you, Tammy Sue Baker, and welcome back to our show today. Yes. This is day two with Dr. David Barton and his son, Tim Barton, founders of Wall Builders, a pro-family organization dedicated to presenting America's forgotten history and its heroes. And David is known as America's historian. He has been named one of America's top 100 most influential evangelicals by Newsmax. Tim Barton is the president of Wall Builders. He's an ordained minister and has worked in a variety of church staff positions. But Tim speaks into the lives of those around him, encourages them to live passionately and to follow Christ wholeheartedly. So today, we're happy to have them back with us today. Yes, such Please an honor. Please welcome David Barton and Tim Barton to our show. <laughs> Excellent. Good to be with you guys. Glad Thank to you. have you here. Yeah. Lori calls you our national treasure. You yeah. really are. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you've taught us so much. You keep it right, you know, in perspective where we are today as believers. And we, yeah. we learn so much from you. So thank you. Let's talk about a bill in front of Congress right now called H.R. 1, the For the People Act. Is that what it's called? Yes. yes. Uh, what is this bill? Yes, sir. It, it, For the People Act is is the kind of colloquial title that's given to it. And H.R. 1, just so everybody's tracking, H.R. Uh, 1 is House Resolution 1. And whenever you have uh, leaders in Congress that come together, whichever party has the majority of Congress, um, they will line up their slate of bills. That, that, that This is what they think are the most important things they want to try to get passed that year in Congress. And so H.R. 1 is the most important thing that they think should be passed. And really, it's a voting reform bill. And one of the things that happened in this last presidential election is there was a lot of things changing in states and, and a lot of times changing in a illegal manner in the sense that uh, under state constitutions and, and even under the federal constitution, uh, voting laws in states are supposed to change by a legislative process. The state legislators come together and they vote that in their state they're going to do things a certain way and and they will vote on that. They'll pass it. That becomes law. And then that's the way that state will operate. In the midst of the COVID shutdown, there was a lot of governors. There was secretaries of state. There were even judges who said, well, the, the legislative body can't meet. And we're just going to we're just going to take over and we're going to do it. And so this is where you saw uh, mail out ballots going all over the state. Um, they extended voting hours and voting days. And then you could mail in the ballots days after the election was over. So even on election day, we wouldn't know who won. And there was a lot of changes that took place. And so in the midst of that, there was a lot of frustration. There was a lot of cries of foul play, a lot of curiosities of did fraud take place and really how much fraud took place. And so in the midst of all those questions, this is where Congress came in and Congress said, well, we're going to just go ahead and officially change things from the federal government perspective. And ironically, a lot of the things that were the most contentious in those elections were things the federal government saying they're going to change. For example, in HR1, they want to do mail-in ballots for every single person in America. Now, this is important. Person in America, not legal U.S. citizen. They're saying every single person should get a mail ballot, which includes illegal voters in the case of they're, they're not legal registered citizens. And of course, under the Constitution, it says that to be a eligible voter, you must be 18 years of age, you must be a legal citizen. And then you also, one of the side laws added after the Constitution was that you also have to be registered to vote so that we know who you are, where you live, we can confirm it's you, and that way you're not voting multiple times from different locations. Under this HR1, they say that we're not going to follow those basic guidelines anymore. We're going to mail out to everybody, whether they're a citizen or not. They want to remove photo ID. Essentially, what they're doing is they're saying that states no longer get to choose how their elections will be, which under the Constitution, it says that states get to choose the time, place, and manner of the elections. And so states can do it differently. Some states, maybe they don't want to have early voting. Some states, maybe they want to have a month of early voting. Well, states can do it differently, but it, this is part of where the founding fathers and their brilliance, they separated powers, both in the three branches of government, because you have the legislative, the executive, and the judicial, but they also separated power between the federal and the state governments. And they made sure that the state governments had a lot of power over their own destiny, their own sovereignty. They could control a lot of things inside their state. 
H.R. 1, you now have Democrats in Congress saying that we don't think states should be in charge of their own elections anymore and basic election integrity laws like having someone show a voter ID or making sure that they're actually a registered citizen, very simple things is being removed from H.R. 1. So H.R. 1 is the most important thing to this Democrat Congress, and ultimately it would it would transform voting in America for, for the rest of our nation's future if this was actually passed. There's a lot of things in it that the majority of Americans are not in favor of a lot of things that are in it, but as you do a lot of things in politics, they put a title on it that is for the people. And so, well, you, you can't really be against something that's for the people. They give it a title that sounds very seductive, that sounds very uh, non-threatening, and therefore it's easy for people to embrace. Most Americans have not read HR1. They don't know what's in it. They don't know what changes election law, but it would change election laws in very devastating ways for Americans. Is election security a real issue? Yeah, election security is a definite issue. We already know that. We've seen so many cases just since the last election of dozens of cases of people who are now being prosecuted for election fraud. Uh, we know this is a big issue. We know it's a big deal. There's a lot of people, just being real frank here for a minute, polling-wise, we know that only about 6% of Americans have a biblical worldview. We're talking only 1 in 16 we know that America is the most secular that it has been in recorded polling history. We have less people attending church now than mm -hmm. ever. Everything is down. So part of what happens is, is if you're God conscious, that affects your behavior. Mm -hmm. If you're not God conscious, then you answer to no one but yourself. If mm -hmm. you don't believe there's a God, then you, you do what you want. So what happens when you're not God conscious, you're much more likely to say the end justifies right. the means. I want my side to win, and if I need to cheat to do that, so what? It's good for everybody to have my side win. I say, uh, you know, I'm going to have to stand before God and answer to that, and if I break the laws, if I break the rules, maybe I don't get caught by the government, but I will get caught by God, and I'm not going to do that. So there is a lot of self-restrained behavior from people who are more God-fearing, God-conscious, biblical worldview Secular folks are not necessarily having that restraint. They say, well, I'm a good person. Well, because I'm good, everybody needs to vote the way I want them to. And that's not the way it should work. So what we're seeing right now is there is a lot of election fraud. There are a lot of cases moving forward uh, still yet. There's a lot of prosecutions already happened. So no question it's there. And no question this is part of human nature. I mean, one of the things we saw back in 1864 was the first prosecuted instances of voter fraud from mail-in ballots. And it was because at that time, people wanted Abraham Lincoln to lose. Mm -hmm. They wanted George B. McClellan to win. And so they did very organized voter fraud back in the 1864 election. The same kind of charges of that are, are, are said to have happened in this election, but it's nothing new. Well, and, and speaking of it's nothing new, it's, it's also worth noting that if we're talking about only 6% of Americans have a biblical worldview, that this has nothing to do with political party at this point. That's right. Right. That this should arguably be a very much a bipartisan issue that you want to have security of elections, that you don't want the other side to cheat and be able to win, whether you're a Democrat, independent, Republican, right, whatever, however you identify, whatever party you vote with, this should be a absolutely unified, uniform position that people take and say, we want there to be election security. And historically, we know that fraud does take place, and we know it even took place this election. Now, some people would say they would want to swing the pendulum one way or the other, sometimes too far, right? Some people say, well, right, President Trump won, Joe Biden didn't win, Joe Biden didn't get any votes. Okay, obviously, there were a lot of people that voted for President Trump, or in this case, former President Trump, and now current President Biden. But there are some people in the other end of the spectrum who say that, no, there was no voter fraud, no cheating took place. Well, the reality is probably somewhere in the middle is that certainly we know there's voter fraud because there's documented cases of voter fraud. Was it enough to sway the election? That's not been proven yet, right? That, that it's not been proven that this last presidential election was stolen or cheated. So that's not what we're claiming at all. But the fact that voter fraud does occur is certainly true because you can even go back to someone like Lyndon Baines Johnson. Right. There's some history there of him running, I think, a senator. Wait, it was senator in Texas at the time. Yeah, senator. And, and before that, his, his box 13. OK, so one of the things and, and this is one of the concerns when you have mail in voting that can show up 
weeks after the election date. So one of the things that, that Lyndon Baines Johnson has now confirmed that happened in some of his races when he was being elected as a politician in Texas is they would have certain districts that wouldn't report their votes right away. And that certain district would wait until they found out what the vote total was. So maybe he's down by 35 votes. And so this certain district would then turn in all their votes and it would have an, an additional 40 votes, which is actually just the right number he needed to be able to secure and win that victory. And, and, and this has been historically confirmed that Lyndon Bain Johnson did cheat in these elections with his, and it was box, the box, box 13, 13 yeah. was the name of the box that they would bring in really late and it would have all the right number of votes. But the point is that this is something that historically you can point to multiple occasions and examples where people have tried to delay the election in the sense of they wanted all the votes to be counted, but we're going to save some of these ballots until we find out what the numbers are. And then we'll make sure that we fill in enough ballots that we get the numbers that we need for our guy to win. And then we'll turn in these ballots that have the right number for our guy to win. That's one of the concerns with some of the voter fraud that could happen with mail-in ballots that can be turned in days later, especially when there's no voter ID, there's no signature verification required. So literally anybody can write a name on these and turn it in, and you can't challenge and contest it under the new law. And this is part of the voter fraud that we've seen historically yeah. and, and is a concern today. Well, when you look at, at what they're doing in Congress right now, and this, this bill's already passed the House, it hasn't gone through the Senate yet, President Biden wants to sign this bill, as Tim says, one of the things it does is knocks out all voter ID. Let me point out right now, 35 states have voter ID. So this actually overturns what 35 states are doing, and that's red states and blue states. As Tim said, this is not necessarily a partisan issue. It can be, shouldn't be. But you also have, in, in addition to those 35 states, we see the polling right now, somewhere between 72 and 77 percent of America thinks we should have voter mm -hmm. ID. Now, this federal law says we don't care what any state thinks. Here's what you're going to do. And that's just not a, a good way of going at it. And by the way, this is one of only many provisions in this kind of federalization of elections. And it's not a federalization of elections. It's a progressive liberalization of elections. It's taking a worldview from a very specific group and imposing it on everyone else rather than letting states choose the way they want to choose. The, as Tim said, the Constitution says, time, place, and manner. The federal government is taking that away from the states and saying, we'll decide what you need. You can't do that. Wow. Does common sense mean nothing anymore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, unfortunately, not a lot. Um, which is also an interesting thought is it, common sense is really rooted in biblical truth. That's right. Right? Because That's common right. sense is understanding the world works a certain way. Well, if you want to know how the world works— you read the manual, right? That That's the Bible. If you don't know the Bible, you don't have as much common sense because it's not common knowledge anymore, and it's really the truth of the way the world operates. So no, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of common sense because people don't know the truth of how God made the world to function. We don't know the Word of God anymore. And so simply, we live in a culture and a world where it's very similar to what the Bible describes in the book of Judges, uh, where it says that each did according to what was right in his own eyes. That's kind of the world we live in, where people are motivated more by how they feel in that moment or, or what they think or, or what it means to them. Truth has become very subjective and up to the individual. And so when individuals are now determining what is right and wrong, the only thing they view as right or wrong is what advances their cause or that's what right. hurts their cause. And so as long as my team wins, that's all I really care about. That's part of this ideology, part of the worldview that we are seeing promoted in HR1. What can we do to make sure we have free elections, to make sure we have honest election? Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you say is the absolute path to honesty and clarity and a, a constitutional e event that can take place? Yeah, there, there are several things, and a lot of them are more long-term. What we're doing right now is we're shutting the barn door after the horses escape. I mean, we're trying to fix something that's been a problem for a while that we haven't been fixing. Mm -hmm. And the way we fix things like this is by putting good people in the channel. You want to elect people that have character, that have a love of the Constitution, have a knowledge of the Constitution. We, we literally ha have not been doing that in recent elections. We just kind of show up to see who's at the top. We're above the top. You always get healthy from the bottom up, not from the top down. 
We should be right now looking at school board elections. We should be looking at city council elections. We should be looking at local elections because that's the farm team mm -hmm. for these guys that are in the House and the Senate and become president. And so going to that farm team, and, and that is so significant. And, and by the way, just to give an example, go, go ahead, Tim. Well, I was going to point out, as you're talking about farm team, it's, it's also worth noting that the biggest accusations of fraud in the last presidential election happened from city levels. That's right. Right? It, whether you talk about Atlanta or, or Philadelphia or Detroit, it was city level. Well, okay, so city level, what does that mean? That means city council. Right. That, that, that means people at the local level that are doing things and actually even below city council, you have the people involved in your local elections, which are also oftentimes elected positions. Sometimes they're appointed, but oftentimes they're elected positions. And, and you're talking about now when we're talking about the accusations of voter fraud from the last presidential election, how many people voted in those local elections for the people who were making these major decisions? And, and now people are I, I think especially even COVID helped bring a realization of how important local elections are. Because when you have local mayors that are shutting down cities, that are enforcing some of these crazy draconian measures against businesses and the requirements of businesses and these mask mandates and all these things that are happening from the local level, I think most Americans didn't even know who their mayor was or their governor right. was. And then COVID happened, they go, wait a second, what's going on? I would say it's probably similar when it comes to some of these local positions. Until this last presidential election, there, I think they're probably – were a lot of people who didn't realize how the political process worked, how voting worked. And, and, and so as you're saying, the farm team local, it really does make a difference because if you can stop the fraud on a local level, well, right. if, every, if every city, if every community can stop the fraud in their area, all of a sudden you don't have a national problem because it was solved at the local yeah. level. But that means you have to find people locally to elect at that position. And see, if you'll take something, uh, let me just take California for a while, because California has been very hostile to churches, to having churches be open, whether they can sing, anything else. They, they've really kind of micromanaged that. And Los Angeles has been a city in, in California that's been really focused on that. Now, the mayor of Los Angeles, th think about how big the city of Los Angeles is. We're talking the second biggest city in the country. It, the, the mayor of the city of Los Angeles is the equivalent of the governor of 23 separate states. In other words, the population of, of Los Angeles, there are 23 states that have less population than that city does. So if you're the mayor of Los Angeles, that's like being a governor in 23 different states. The mayor of Los Angeles brags about the fact that he was elected with he was elected with 2.9% of the vote. Three out of 100 people went and chose him for mayor. And so this is where we're not looking, as Tim said, all these cities, this is where the controversy was. We're not looking at those places. That's where we should look. Yeah, and you really can. There is a lot of reason for hope and optimism if, if people get involved. And there's really good examples like Florida. If you go back to 2018 mm -hmm. in Florida, Florida was a disaster in their elections. In, in a very similar way with the last presidential election we saw where after election night, we still didn't know who the winner was. Well, in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis ran for governor and nobody knew who won for more than four weeks after the election. Now, process for a second. You have an election four weeks after the votes are allegedly turned in. You still don't know. Well, it's because there were counties like Broward County in Florida that kept finding ballots Weeks after the election, they were magically finding ballots. This was a problem. And so when Governor Ron DeSantis finally got elected, which he, of course, was elected, he's a governor down in Florida now. When he got elected as governor, he said, OK, th this is ridiculous. We need to fix our, our election system here in Florida. And so he made that his goal to fix the election system that he wanted the next time anybody ran for governor, they shouldn't have to go through the nightmare of the election process he went through. And so they went to the, the counties that were finding votes weeks after, and, and they actually, in their state legislature, they passed laws and they said, hey, you have to have your votes turned in and counted by election night, 9 p.m. They put some very specific things in place, including that you had to have voter ID. And, and uh, if you were going to vote absentee, you had to request that. And, and the, the things that make a lot of sense, and it's not disenfranchising people, it wasn't targeting people of minority descent, as some people argue today, some of those laws are. That's not what this was at all. But the point is, Florida was a disaster in the 2018 election. If you go to the 2020 election, the presidential election, not only was Florida one of the very first states to call the election, 
everybody had uh, all the commentators, political commentators, uh, political consultants were talking about Florida was going to be a toss up state, could go either direction. Nobody really knows. And Florida's been a toss up state since back 2000 with Bush Gore. I mean, for 20 years, nobody knew who, who was going to win that state. So, so this was a thought and argument from Florida. It's a toss up state, except. This election, Florida wasn't even close to a toss-up state. President Trump won Florida by more than 700,000 votes. In Florida, every vote was turned in early, was counted on time, so it was early in the night. This is where you can get involved at the local level, at the state level, and you can solve a lot of these problems for your state. But that, as you mentioned, it does take getting involved at the local level because a lot of this does involve the, the city council. It does involve people locally. But there is a lot of reason for hope and optimism when you look at a state like Florida that for decades had been a disaster when it came to elections and counting votes and getting votes turned in and all these issues. And then it also is reflective of what can happen when you have a leader step in and that leader says, we're going to solve this problem. You really can solve problems, but it takes getting involved at the local level and then working to help your state do better. All of those are things that people can do. Now, with that being said, HR1 would want to change fundamentally some of those things. So something else that is going to be no surprise to everybody watching us now, something else you need to do is start praying. Because we recognize that, that in some of this, we definitely need God's help and intervention. We know the Bible tells us that, that God can move the heart of the king, right? Just like God can direct a stream, a, a course of water, God can move the heart of the king. Well, in this case, this is HR 1's already passed in the House. It is not passed in the Senate. We need God's intervention for this not to get passed in the Senate. And so we need to start praying that God would work on the hearts and the minds of, of these senators that are there. And actually, for many of you watching, it's probably worth calling yeah. your, your senators from your state and telling them, hey, mm -hmm. do not support HR. I want you to know I'm one of your constituents, and I do not support this, and I'm asking you, please do not vote for this. This needs to be something that our state does, et cetera. But we definitely can pray, and then you can call your U.S. senators that represent your state, and you can let your voice be heard to try to keep this from going forward. Yeah, in the Senate right now, what we're told by senators and others is this entire bill is resting on one person. There is one person that is standing and saying, not going to do this because there are 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans. Right now, there's one Democrat saying this is not the right thing to do. We shouldn't be taking this away from states. And by the way, the way you want to do this is to change the process. You want to get rid of the filibuster. Don't think we should do that. We've had that for 100 years. So there's one senator, and believe me, she is getting pounded by people on the left who want to push through this, this bad election reform. So if we had two or three senators rather than yeah. just one, if we called the others and said, hey, stop this thing. Well, I think Joe Manchin from West Virginia, I think there's a couple who have expressed some level of concern, but there's still, there, there are, are, are 50 senators that are aligning with a Democrat position. There are 50 that are Republican. And if it ends up being a tie, and there is no filibuster, that it means it's simple majority, then the vice president, who's Kamala Harris, can come in and break that tie. And this is something they want. So definitely pray, definitely call your senator, but also recognize we can solve many of these problems at the local level. If we will get involved locally, we can help ensure that we don't have fraud in our area, that there's very right. basic things in place that can help secure our elections. Mm, wow. wow. That is so powerful. So uh, I've, I've been concerned about... You know, people will ask, you know, what should I, I run for office? Should yeah. I be a part of it? Right. And you're saying the church people have to be a part of the local government all the way the local from level. the lower levels of right. government, the as you call board, it. The school the local level. Mm -hmm. it, if God is so, leading man, you. It, it, I just want to make it clear that you believe that Christians should get involved with government at the local levels. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. And, and let me just take kind of a moral issue, different from voting, and, and show how this works. I want to go back about six and a half years ago. Six and a half years ago, there was not much debate nationally in America about how many genders there were. We knew there was a male and there was a female, and everybody pretty accepted on that. That's only six and a half, seven years ago. It was actually the city of Fort Worth, Texas, the school board in the city of Fort Worth, Texas, said, hey, we think that here in Cowtown, USA, which is, it's named Cowtown, it's a conservative state, it's considered a conservative town, 
the school board said, you know what, we don't think we'll have separate bathrooms anymore for genders. We think that all of our school kids will share the same bathroom and all of our school kids will share the same locker room. We shouldn't have male and female locker rooms or bathrooms. Now, this is coming out of Texas, out of Fort Worth, Texas. So this is a school board. Now, here's the deal on that. The, the, at that time, the Obama administration said, you know, that's a really good idea. They picked it up in the Federal Department of Education, and they said, any school that gets federal funds, you're going to go to no genders in the bathrooms. You're going to go to just male, no male, no female. And, and specifically, it wasn't just, I mean, we're saying no male and female, which is would have been the impact mm -hmm. of it. What they said is, if you identify as a male, you can use a male restroom. If you identify as female, you can use a female restroom. We don't care about your basic biology or anatomy anymore. So in effect, what that's doing is saying genders don't matter, that everybody can use whatever bathroom they want. That is the impact mm -hmm. of what they were saying. So just, just to clarify, because some right. people might go, wait a second, they said there's only be one restroom in the whole school? Right. Okay, no. What they were saying was that you can now identify however you want to, and by the way, in the midst of that, um, we also won't tell your parents how you identify or what bathroom. There's no accountability, uh, like major, major issues. And so from, I mean, kind of a country, with the point you're making, Fort Worth, a country town was the one who initiated this. Yeah. President Obama said, hey, it's a great idea. If people identify different, let them do whatever they want, however they feel, on whatever day they feel that, that's fine. They can use that locker room, that shower, that bathroom, which, okay, obviously, right, if you're thinking of, a non-Christian secular teenage boy, and you've just told him the only thing he needs to do to be able to get into the girl's locker room, bathrooms, and showers is say he feels like a girl that day. Like, we don't see this possibly having negative consequences. Well, what's more significant is when you look at that school board. Yeah, what happened in Fort Worth, and, and by the way, this went national from out of Fort Worth. Now, here's the deal. Fort Worth has 800,000 people. That sounds like a whole lot. The president of the school board was elected with under 1,200 votes out mm -hmm. of 800,000. There was a, a church in that district where the school board president was. The church in that district had 3,000 evangelical Bible-believing adults in that church. One church had the capacity to be able to stop this by having the school board president be different, but nobody votes in the election. I, again, 800,000, 1,100 or actually 1,200 there about votes in that election, that, that's not good. So what happened was as this started across the country, people started saying, hey, not in my community. We, we had a lady in, in Northwest Arkansas said, you're not gonna do this in my school. She ran for school board in a town of 40,000 and she got elected with a total of 35 votes out of 40,000 of the town. We had another guy in Iowa who said, not in my town. He ran for the school board and he got busy on election day and did not vote. And no, it's not that he lost by one vote. It's that nobody voted in his election at all. If he had voted for himself, he'd be on the school board. See, school board is where the stuff stops now. And what, what President Biden is now saying with, hey, we want the critical race theory in 1619 project. We want it in every school. And we'll pay those school districts money if you'll teach this bad history, bad philosophy. You need local school board people. And this comes, this is federal stuff that's come to the local level. That's where you stop it. And you're saying this on a moral level. So let me also point out from a biblical perspective, should Christians get involved locally? Let me take you to Matthew 6. Yes. When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, right? We, we know it as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here's the question. Jesus said we should pray that. Great, we should pray that. Who actually makes that happen? Who is the one who actually ushers in bringing God's kingdom here on earth, his will being done as Christians? Well, how do we do that? Well, what is God's will for kids going to school? God's will for kids going to school is that they would come to know him, that they would come to, to study his word, to live according to his word. Well, well how do we make that happen? Well, you gotta be part of the school board that makes decisions for that school of what kids are gonna do. See, the way that we bring God's kingdom here on earth is we get involved in all the different areas that impact bringing God's kingdom here on earth. And so this notion that, that well, Christians, we shouldn't get involved in all these secular arenas, that's not what the Bible teaches at all on any level. I've just given one example of a Bible verse. I literally could go through dozens of examples where when you take the application of Scripture, if we're going to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, part of our prayer also should be, God, use me to do that. Use me 
to bring your kingdom here, to let your will be done here in my city, in my school district, and therefore I'm going to be involved in what's happening with local races. I, whether I run for office or whether I nominate somebody from my Sunday school class, somebody from my church, one of my friends who runs a business, I'm going to find somebody, and if it's me, it's going to be me, to get involved at a local level, to for the school board, for the city council, for whatever's going on, we need to be involved locally and absolutely as a Christian. If we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, we also need to pray that God uses us to bring fulfillment of that prayer, mm -hmm. that his kingdom would come and his will would be done in our city and in our schools. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I've learned in life that when you say, here I am, God, he searches the world to and fro yeah. all over for that person that will say, here I am, Lord, use me. And when you mean that from your heart, he's going to take you up on it. And this may be an area he, he will take you up on that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Church people need to get involved. They are changing the laws right, right before yeah. our eyes. And then we're crying wolf. I mean, this is crazy that, I don't know, maybe we've been told as Christians, we're not allowed to do that. I don't know where that came from, but I know that our kids' future is on the line. That's I thank right. God yeah. for College of the Ozarks, uh, that they're fighting for their rights. Mm -hmm. They're suing the government right now. Listen, we need people with backbone. And if you watch yeah. the first program, I think creating opportunities. And as church people, we need to get behind leaders that are running for office. Can you imagine one lady changed prayer in school? That's yeah. One lady. That's yeah. incredible. We could solve a lot. Yeah. If we just saw every human being as a human being. Amen. And we just got to get this prejudice out of our mind mm -hmm. and that all are created equal. Amen. 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 And that God loves us so very much. But David, there's another bill in front of Congress right now called uh, H.R. 5, the Equality Act. Can you tell us about what this act is. Yeah, uh, e equality is great because God gives equality, but not this bill. This bill is actually the LGBTQ Supremacy Act because mm -hmm. what it does is says we don't like the fact that biblical people with their conscience say, hey, marriage is a man and a woman and there's two genders and that's what we believe. This says if you believe that, you need to lose any kind of standing you have mm -hmm. in civil areas and so what, what it does, it says if, if you have a belief, a religious belief, a conscience belief uh, about gender, about sexuality, about marriage, about whatever, you have to give that up. This federal law, if it passes, will take gender and place it at the same level as race and religion in civil rights laws. And so what happens is gender then becomes a civil right that trumps your religious liberties. So with H.R. 5, it becomes an open blanket to persecute. Now, it's called the Equality Act, but it's not because it gives supremacy to those who are opposed to traditional religious beliefs. And it gives them the ability to come after you with federal law, with federal forces and, and say, hey, you have to give up your belief. You have to, you know, in the case of, of, of going to court or whatever it is for this belief. So it's called the Equality Act. It is not the Equality Act. Yeah, and, and it's worth noting in the midst of this, there there are several direct threats that are in this That's coming right. against if you're an adoption agency. And let's say that there's actually many Catholic adoption agencies and, and the Catholic position has long been what the Bible teaches when it comes to gender and human sexuality. That there's a male and a female. And, and these Catholic adoption agencies that have, again, been around for some of them hundreds of years that are looking for a home where there is a mother and a father that they can place this child in. Well, this Equality Act says, if you are not willing to place a child with a lesbian couple or a homosexual couple, then you will lose your license. You will lose your ability to even be able to run this orphanage or right, whatever this system is that you run. The same thing with Christian businesses. There have been laws that have passed in America before that maybe were things uh, aggressive in in interpretation, uh, especially when it comes to to Christianity. But there were what, what was known as a religious exemption. So when it when it come to a hiring act, that if you were a a company, an organization who did business with the city, who did business with the federal government, if you did not hire LGBTQ plus people, then you were shown or you'd be accused of being discriminatory in your hiring practices, and you would lose contracts, etc. 
there were given religious exemptions for churches that if churches believe that marriage is a man and woman, or if there's a Christian school and they believe marriage is a man and woman, then they wouldn't have to hire people from the LGBT community because there was a religious exemption. In HR 5, there is no religious exemption, which means that if somebody from the LGBTQ plus community shows up to your church, to your Christian school, and they apply for a job, and, and you do not hire them on the grounds that their worldview, their philosophy does not line up with biblical truth, with what your organization believes, your church, your school can be shut down because of your discriminatory hiring practices, because you're not viewing equality. And again, this is not equality in the sense of everybody is treated as a human. This is equality in the sense of if you do not hire someone from LGBTQ+, then you don't have the right to operate as a business anymore. And that uh, very devastating. There's a lot more consequences and side effects, but that's part of HR 5. This wow. Really so this is something. a threat to religious freedom for the individual in well, America. Yeah. yeah. I want everybody to order this. Uh, we, we have David this. and Tim, would tell me about this America's Hidden History. Why do, why do Americans need to get this series? It's seven hours of great production. Mm -hmm. Tell us why this could help change America, this series. Well, we are living in the middle of a cancel culture right now. And, and part of what people are trying to cancel is actually America herself. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason people think America has been fundamentally flawed or bad or racist, or you can kind of name the adjective that's negative that's thrown against America, is because we really don't know American history. In fact, if you look at some of our major American holidays, most people don't even know what that day is about or why we celebrate it or, or details surrounding it. And so what we did is we went for and there, there's seven one hour episodes uh, and, and these were initially filmed for TV. They're professionally done. So very, very neat stories. But it's a one hour session where we go through and we tell part of the history of America, part of the history of the people involved with some of these major holidays. So, for example, President's Day is a, a national holiday. And so we go through on President's Day and we highlight some amazing presidents we've had in American history. We we go from the 4th of July and Constitution Day and Black History Month and Veterans Day. And we go through a lot of these major things that today people just don't know much of the story of American history. They don't know the people involved. And, and it's one of the reasons that a lot of the attacks against America are actually sticking today, because if you don't know the truth, it's easier to believe a lie. But when you know the truth, it's easier to recognize that's a lie. And if you know it's a lie, it's easier to reject it. Most Americans today don't know the truth of America, who we are, where we came from, how we overcame so many of the problems that other nations are still dealing with today. America has had moments, bad moments, dark moments, sinful moments in our past, for sure. But America has overcome and corrected those moments faster than almost any other nation in the history of the world. But we did it because of the influence of Christianity on our nation. Now, today, you might look at the problems of America and go, OK, we have so many problems today. Well, we do. But it's also because we are more secular today than we've ever been in the history of our nation. The truth is that Christianity brings truth and freedom to individuals. And when you follow God's ways, God ways work. That's part of the history of our nation, of why we've been so successful and so stable. So we go for seven episodes through some of the major holidays in our nation, but giving you the history about who were involved, the major founding fathers, their stories, and some of the really cool redemption moments in American history. Well, everybody needs to get this DVD series. And I, when I say everybody, I mean everybody, every single yeah. one of you that are watching. Yes. And this is, and like Tim just shared with us, this is seven hours of teaching. This is a four DVD set. It's professionally done. It was done for television. It's excellent when you have these different topics where you have each hour, there's Black History Month, President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, which is the 4th of July, everybody, Constitution Day, Veterans Day, and Thanksgiving and understanding the history. I know. I'm sitting here saying, yeah. yes, you're right. Most of us don't know. And and to ed you are educating us, David and Tim, in such a massive way to help us understand and um Everybody needs to get this. We also have the friends and family offer where you receive three mm -hmm. of the DVDs for $100. And I can tell you, 
I believe, you know, that young people need yeah, to learn this absolutely. in a big way. And I'm, when I say young people, I'm not just talking, when I say young people, I'm not talking like you, my solo, that's 31. Mm -hmm. I'm talking younger. Yes, I'm talking in teenagers or younger than that. Mm -hmm. And they can understand really the just truth. Just the simple fact that the history behind Thanksgiving is being challenged today. Yeah. It's scary. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's one it's of the evil. Most, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just like Mr. <laughs> Tim said, they're trying to cancel America itself. It's crazy. And if we don't understand it, I am afraid that our next generation, our grandkids, our kids mm -hmm. are not going to know the true history. I saw this yesterday with our team. And I got to tell you, this video mm -hmm. not only has great image, it has great stories of the past. Excellent. And I couldn't believe. Just Would your children understand it? Absolutely, yes. one hundred percent. They're ten years old. I can't twins. wait to get Here, this. I give it to you right now. Take that home to happy your, father. Your Thank twins. you. So. Happy, he's like happy Father's Day to Listen, myself. Okay. We're losing the history of America. We don't. Yeah. I don't recognize America. But I'm from Central America, and we do everything we can to come to this country legally. That's how I came here. My mother was born in Los Angeles, right. but she will tell us stories about America, and we dream America was the greatest nation, and it still is. But in the history books, it's no longer that. Yeah. It's, it's, they don't, they're, they're not teaching. And I want to tell you something. When we watched this yesterday, right. I could not believe the history of Thanksgiving. I could not believe the history of Independence Day. I could not believe the history of Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me into a journey. To, and I tell you what, I fell in love with America once again. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it's time to pray for this nation. It's time to thank God for America and the history that we have. You got to get this. Yes. Order it today for your dad. Order it for your son, your daughter. Do whatever it can. We have to keep yeah. this legacy alive. Amen. This would be really wonderful to play for all my grandchildren. Yes, because this is pictures yeah. and, and all, too. So it's really, really important. We're so happy to have had David Barton and Tim Barton with us yes, today. Yes, what an yeah. honor. And you can have this whole video, seven hours of America's history. This is where we come from. You know what would be the cool? real truth? Yeah. yeah. We love tradition in our families, right? Yes, yeah. very I tell you much. what, when, President Day, when President's Day come, yes. get the President's Day episode and play it that day. Yes. When Thanksgiving comes, let's play that on Thanksgiving. And that that will be train. a tradition. Because if we don't train our children... Yes. The schools aren't That's going to do it. it. It's $35 for one set of the uh, DVD set, the four disc, which is a seven hours of incredible teaching. Um, and you will be educated. You will be schooled. You will learn. It's incredible. So you can teach those around you as well. Or you can get the friends and family offer, which I highly recommend, three of the DVD sets for $100 donation to the ministry. This all includes shipping and handling. So call us right now at 1-888-988-1588 or go to jimbakershow.com or you can write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. But it's, it's time we tell truth. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you That's something it. that people I... people learn the truth. Well, yeah. I think something that is so amazing that Tim said, and I, I scribbled it down, wrote it down here, and I saw Monticello next to me writing yeah. the same thing down. And when he said, common sense mm. is rooted in biblical truth. Amen. Isn't that yeah. the truth, people? Yes. Yeah. Don't you get that? Don't you agree with that? When you have the biblical truths, then you have common sense. Yeah. And you know, in every episode, I was amazed how the biblical inspiration, the the how the Bible influenced everything right. that the presidents did. All Congress yes. was based through scripture. The I, I'm amazed how much scripture it was. This is this episode is based upon because. Mm -hmm. This is going to take you into the Bible, but tell you how men and women were mm. inspired by the true word of God. That means common sense. That how common is. sense played yeah. a part in Thanksgiving. Yeah. Can you imagine well, where, that? Where does it <laughs> yeah. end when governors are shutting down churches mm. yeah. and that is an attack on religious freedom yeah. in America? It's 
it's signifying that churches are not essential. Exactly. And, and if we the church it. don't stand up and That's say, right. yes. this is God given. Yeah. He's, yes. He told us we had to assemble together. Yeah. Yes. And the more so as we see, see. the last days come. Mm -hmm. And here we are in the last days when the church needs to be together. It's time to be prepared, people. And uh, our goal is to build our new studio yes. where we can have thousands of people come here and be with the shows, have teaching every day, have have the worldwide outreach. Amen. Right now, the Jim Baker Show has a potential audience of 1 billion, 600 million viewers. Mm -hmm. And that costs a lot of money to keep that all on the air. And we're on the air because of you. That's yeah. right. Because Amen. of what you have done for us. That's exactly and right. So we have product that we offer. You donate, yes. and we send you a gift. Well, that is how we stand there. That's We're right. product-driven yes. ministry. Yes. And right now, the product of the month is the signal relief. Mm -hmm. It's a signal relief yes. pack. How many, how many it, did you figure out yesterday that we have shipped already of signal relief? Do you remember? I know that we've shipped over 5,000 of the patches. And wow. so it's, I've even had, you know, on Facebook, my social media, I've had many of our partners reaching out saying, I ordered my patch. And really it's because you're experiencing discomfort. And that is what we're learning is that this patch, the technology that is what every time I hold, I mean, it's so amazing when I hold this patch in my hand, I'm amazed at the witty invention that God, I believe it's God, God's giving his people witty inventions that will help you and to help relieve the discomfort that we're dealing in. How can we be effective? If we are truly being paralyzed by discomfort, we can't be effective. We can't get out there and do what the Bartons are telling us to do, which is be involved, stay involved as we, if we are debilitated by, by discomfort in our lives. And so that is why we are offering you a tool that's going to help you. And that's why I'm so excited and we're yes. passionate about helping people. Very passionate about helping people. You're being educated yes. today by the Bartons. We, you can, you can order this or we have the signal relief or and both I would say <laughs> um, to get the signal relief patch to, to help you. Mine is on my back right now otherwise I get it off and show it to you mm -hmm. but um, I have it on and I have one it's on. Yes That's of course right. you do. I'm not showing you though it's yeah. on my back. And what's amazing is you can use this patch this is the way that it comes it's offered in this pack beautiful package so it makes yes. a great gift yes. but it comes this way with the instructions how to use it mm -hmm. the different ways that people are using Using it and here is the patch right here this is the technology behind the signal relief patch included in this you're going to receive three of the adhesives mm -hmm. so you can if you feel that you want to put it directly in a direct spot you can use the adhesives you don't need the adhesives right. and the big thing that we tell everyone it is technology it's technical this it's an antenna true. so right. make sure you don't put it in the wash um, but this is reusable and that's what I love up to two years that you can use this. And even the, the inventor said possibly even more, mm -hmm. you know, the research is still being done, but in this antenna right here, this system, it, the signal relief patch intercepts the noise in your nervous system. It is called a signal filter. This allows you to feel relief from the discomfort you may be experiencing. Exactly. And so that is the basic way to explain the technology of signal relief. But mom, people are putting it, you put it on your neck, yes. on your shoulder, yes. your neck, yes. your, you know, your hips. I know I used it on my hips the other day from sitting in these chairs. <laughs> you know, I could barely get up and walk. And oh. I said, I'm going to give this a try. Oh, and I was blown away way at wow. how just quick I begin to feel that relief mm -hmm. exactly. you know so this is giving people their life back and that's what we keep hearing over and over again is how this is giving them their life back that's right we have a b-roll yes. right now don't we yes we do let's watch this b-roll as we have Lisa Hill who's one of our amazing guests yes. she's telling about this fantastic product and how you can use it
I believe that people, there's people watching today that are probably saying, I've tried everything and nothing is working for me. And we know that in many situations, they have to ingest something um, or they take a risk because maybe the medication uh, isn't going to do well for their body. So what I tell people basically is that I have come across this fantastic breakthrough in technology that it uses your own bodies, your own innate, the, the ability of the body to heal itself at the same time to bring, um, we, we talk about bringing peace to the body, getting rid of the negative energy around us and absorbing that chaotic energy. And so I tell everybody, just try it, put it on your person. You might have to move it around a little bit to the areas that you find might be bringing you the greatest, you know, area of discomfort. Um, but just try it and keep it on for 72 hours. If they have the, you know, whatever level one to 10 or whatever it might be, uh, I tell people, don't just leave it on for one day, leave it on for 72 hours and then see how you feel. And also, one thing I also want to touch upon, Pastor Jim, is that we, it comes with adhesives, but, you know, I have three boys, 39, 37, and 33, and they don't use the, the adhesives. So I tell them, put it in your pocket, keep it in your front pocket, back pocket, just keep it on your person, because I know um, how it's going to make them feel overall. So I just make it super simple and tell people to try. You don't have to put anything into your body. And by the way, you know, it's nothing that's even, you know, um, metadermal so it doesn't go through your skin but it changes the way that the energy of your body responds find the spot place the patch and get moving yes. again yeah that's what it's yeah. all about right. yeah yeah you know we had dr beth dupree with us uh last week mm -hmm. yeah. she was amazing yeah yes. and she is a surgeon yes and she is a uh cancer surgeon mm -hmm. absolutely and she is so respected and believe me she doesn't have to endorse products no but she found this mm -hmm. and uses it herself that's right and now prescribes it to her patient could we roll her her i i know maybe you've seen it before but i want you to see this and then order it try it you like it and if you don't you can get a refund it's yes. 120 that's day right. 120 time day to try it out. Guarantee, yes. Yeah, so that's good. That's let's right. Roll, let's roll Dr. Beth Dupree. I'm a board certified surgeon, and I'm also board certified in integrative medicine. In addition, I have studied multiple forms of energy healing and neuroscience. And if people don't understand that our bodies are electrical, they've never had an EKG. When you put EKG pads on, you can see the pattern of your heart as it comes across and it can help us to diagnose heart attacks when we see changes in that EKG pattern. So that is the easiest way for me to tell people what the electrical signal is that's going through their body that they can all absolutely resonate with. They understand that. So when you think about the heart as an electrical organ, we also have miles and miles and miles of nerve fibers that course through our body. Some of those nerve fibers have um, connectors called synapses, which are mediated or um, are made to work with chemicals. And other synapses are electrical um, synapses. And the electrical synapses go back and forth. They run both ways. So if you have um, an area where you are your body, um, let's say like me, when I, when I fell and twisted my ankle, I immediately got that severe that went from my ankle up to my brain to the point that it took my breath away and made me almost pass out because that was so intense. And what, what we do typically in Western medicine is give a pill for that discomfort. We give a pill for that discomfort that you feel because um, discomfort that takes your breath away is pretty significant. And when you can take that process and allow that signal to have another way to exit your body. So if you're in a traffic jam on a freeway and you know that you're trying to get to this destination, which might be the brain down there at the end of that highway, um, and you, there's, a, there's a shorter pathway, there's an exit that you could take to get off the highway, think of the patch as an exit point where that's, that nerve fiber, that nerve signal can send that signal elsewhere so it's not being fed back to your brain where you're constantly getting that loop of signals and so you're breaking that pathway. Um, when we do surgery, and before I 
make an incision into the skin, we can use local anesthesia so that we can block those fibers and people have less post-operative pain. So what I'm doing is stopping that signal from going to the brain um, to alleviate that discomfort during surgery, even before I make that skin incision. So it has, it's that type of an effect where if you can circumvent that, that pathway, that neural pathway, and make that signal go to a different place or the point of least resistance, um, that to me is how this is working because it's tell, it's not, my brain is no longer feeling discomfort, discomfort, discomfort coming from that nerve fiber. That discomfort signal has gone out through the patch. Wow. wow that's so awesome. here you go, everybody. Yes. You grab a patch, you put it on, and you watch it work. Yes. There it is that. right here. That simple, that easy. And Dr. Beth Dupree explained it. So all of us can understand She's how a this brilliant, amazing brilliant doctor. technology works. And we are so grateful yeah. that God brought this into our lives and so we can share it with you. We love you. We want you to be the very best that you can be. Yes. So did you order it for Everyone two needs of to, them for two ninety five. Well, if you want to get one for husband, one for wife. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. And so you can receive one signal relief patch offer, which includes shipping and handling for a hundred and fifty five dollar donation to the ministry or Better yet, you, believe me, you're going to want the two signal relief patches for $295. And that includes shipping and handling. And I'm going to tell you why. So many people, you're wearing it, then you're telling somebody about it. And the next thing you know, because you love that person, yes. you're taking it off your body and That's giving right. it to them. Yes. And so you need one. So yeah. you can share with other people. And the first thing I thought of was I'm going to send one to my best friend in Arizona. And one of the I most did. successful businessmen in, in, that we know of, you know, in this country has tried it. It was so phenomenal. He, he is buying them and giving yeah. them to mm -hmm. friend after friend yeah. after friend. Yes. That's powerful. Yes. That's powerful. We got to go. It Our time's fly. gone already. Yes, and it is. Order so yours us. now. Call us right now at 1-888-988-1588 or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. 120 day guarantee money that's back right. as far as guarantee. money back yes that's right and if it and as you receive it i do want to remind you send in your testimonials we yes. would love to read them on the air and share your testimony of how the signal relief is helping give your life back amen we have to go remember that god loves you we want to thank dr david barton and dr yes. tim barton for being with us today and god loves you he really does. Call me right now and order our products. 888-988-1588.